Previously, we discussed how CCC uses snapshots and how it creates them and manages them on your source and destination volumes. Next, I'd like to take a look at some concerns related to space. Uh, when you enable snapshots on your startup disk in particular and also on any other volume, uh, things behave a little bit differently. When you delete files and empty the trash, for example, uh, that space is not immediately freed if those files are referenced in a snapshot. So we're going to take a look at those next. Okay, so you've got CCC set up to back up your startup disk to a backup disk. You've got snapshots enabled on each of those. And a little while later, you start to notice maybe free space on your startup disk is getting a little bit lower than you expected, or maybe free space on the destination seems lower than you expected. If you want to see how much space is used on any particular disk, and in particular how much space is used by snapshots, you can select that volume in CCC sidebar. In this case, we can see with the volume usage indicator here that we've got 105 gigs of space used on that volume and 80, about 85 uh, gigabytes of that is used by snapshots. Over here in the snapshot table, we've got a list of all of the snapshots that CCC or Time Machine or any other application has created on that volume. Uh, CCC indicates the time that it was created and the size and the type of that snapshot. And as you scroll down, you can see we've got a lot of snapshots on this volume, and some of them are pretty big. So I could select an individual snapshot here and delete that snapshot, and that would free up some space. Or I could select a whole bunch and delete those, and that would free up even more space. Uh, but more practically, it's probably better to just change the retention policy if you want to have more free space avail available. In this case, you can see that I've got the free space threshold set artificially low, so I could change that to say 100 gigabytes, or in this case I don't have a very large disk, so I could set it to the default of 30 gigabytes. Or maybe I just don't want to keep as many snapshots, so instead of keeping a weekly snapshot beyond the, uh, the daily snapshots that we keep for a month, I could say keep um, snapshots every 10 days or every 30 days or something like that. Or I could set this to zero, and then I would have snapshots only for uh, daily snapshots only for the last month. And you know, for a lot of people, that's probably just fine. We don't necessarily need to have snapshots in perpetuity. Another thing I'd like to point out is that the size indicated here might be a little bit misleading. This size indicates how much space would be freed if I were to delete that snapshot. It's not an indication of how much data is restorable within that snapshot. When that snapshot was created, it captured the state of every single file on the disk at that particular moment, and there was more like 20 gigabytes on there. So if I were to double click on this and look at it in the finder, you can see that there's actually lots and lots of stuff there. So it's not just 36 megabytes of data in that particular snapshot. That's just how much space would be freed if I were to, to delete that snapshot. And where that number comes from is that there's 36 megabytes of files that only exist in this snapshot. They're not, they were deleted after the snapshot was created, so this snapshot is the last reference holder for those particular files. And the other thing I want to point out is that the total snapshot usage is not simply a sum of all of the numbers listed here. It's a little bit more complicated than that. And to demonstrate that, I'd like to take a look at a, a simpler example uh, over here on this volume. So in this case, I've got three snapshots. They were created very quickly, one after the other. And there is a single 1.5 gigabyte file on this volume. And when I created each of these snapshots, this file was in place, and it was pretty much the only file on the volume. So each of these snapshots has a reference to this file, and that file still exists on the disk. I haven't deleted it yet. So if I look at the size of each of these snapshots, right now it says that they are zero kilobytes. And that's because if I were to delete that snapshot, nothing actually gets deleted on disk. Uh, so you know there's no space that's going to be freed. And if I select all three of these snapshots, it says 90 kilobytes. There's probably some hidden file that had gotten modified between those snapshot creations. Uh, but still, it's not that 1.5 gigabytes, and that's because the file still exists on disk. Now, if I were to delete this file, you're going to notice two things. 
when I empty the trash, right now this says there's 1.39 gigabytes free on this volume. When I empty the trash, that number doesn't change. And that's because each one of these snapshots still holds a reference to that file. I can undelete that file, basically, by mounting the snapshot and then copying it back. But each, you'll notice that each one of these snapshots still says that it's zero kilobytes, even though each one of these still has a reference to that one and a half gigabyte file. And that's because if I were to delete this snapshot, let's unmount that. If I delete that snapshot, it's still a zero kilobyte snapshot. These other two snapshots still have a reference to that 1.5 gigabyte file. So we still have 1.46 gigabytes of disk usage held by snapshots. If I select the, the two remaining snapshots together, we can see that the total of the snapshot disk usage, if I were to delete both of those snapshots, is 1.46 gigabytes. But again, for each one of those individual snapshots, just deleting the one snapshot and leaving the other is not going to change the disk usage. Now if we get down to just one snapshot left, you'll see that now that snapshot is the last reference holder th for that 1.46 gigabyte file. And if I delete this snapshot now, the total disk usage will go down. And now we're, we're completely free there. If you have additional questions about using Carbon Copy Cloner, select Carbon Copy Cloner Help from the Help menu and search the Knowledge Base. You can also ask a question about CCC to submit a question to our help desk or visit bombic.com.